Hi there! I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And in this video, we're going to be talking about Was it something I said? Hmm. A very common question. We have a very unique email coaching today. You know, sometimes we say things in relationships that can instantly destroy attraction, mm -hmm. right? I mean, there are certain things you just can't say or do that can cause a breakup. But we have an interesting email coaching because this was meant to be more of a joke. But after it happened, the whole situation just completely mm -hmm. spiraled out of control. Yeah. So I wound up doing an email coaching with him. And then uh, he wound up doing a Skype call with you. Mm -hmm. So you have some insights on this one too. But you're going to find this is an interesting one. Uh, and it's a cautionary tale. Mm -hmm. Right? I was a little surprised by this one. Yeah. The guy in this email is in his mid-twenties and his girlfriend is just a couple of years younger. Uh, we're going to call him Larry and we'll call his girlfriend Amanda. He says, we started dating in the beginning of December of 2022. We had an intense relationship. We talked all day, every day, had lots of passionate sex. She spent three to four nights a week at my house and we had planned to do things for our birthdays and there were talk about putting up Christmas trees together. So this is a little bit too much too soon in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is gonna overwhelm somebody. Three to four nights a week, uh, talking all day every day, that's a lot. Yeah, and, and already making plans for the future. Yeah, and it, you know, even though in the beginning it's great and amazing, it usually leads to a breakup because it's too much. Mm -hmm. We never fought or even raised our voices at each other. She always said how sexy I made her feel and how I complimented her more than past boyfriends, a lot of whom had cheated on her, and how I embraced her quirks while others shot them down. So it does sound like there's a good chemistry and mm -hmm. there's a lot going well, although it's too much. Yeah. At the end of January, we went to meet one of her friends for lunch. When we got there, she hit a curb hard. We both started laughing and I said, that sounded expensive, you effing idiot. Okay, now he didn't say effing, <laughs> just to clarify. So it sounds like maybe she was parking the car and hit something and he just tried to make a joke, but it did not go well. Now, mm -hmm. it was interesting because when I read this, I thought, I know a lot of people that wouldn't have been upset by that, offended in any way, and they would have just been laughing too. Mm -hmm. And as somebody who hits a lot of curves, <laughs> I gotta say, I mean, he's not wrong. I think I would have laughed at that comment myself. <laughs> yeah, uh, but she didn't take it so well. She knows I have a biting sense of humor and we've used it together but this was the first time it was directed at her. I immediately saw the hurt in her eyes and apologized profusely. After lunch, we talked more and I continued to say how sorry I was and how guilty I felt. She left and brought back flowers, chocolate, and a card for me because I was so visibly upset that I hurt her. Hmm. And this is very odd. Mm -hmm. Okay. How upset was he acting that she went and bought him flowers, a card, and chocolate? Mm -hmm. I mean, the reversal. It's like, now I feel bad that you said something that hurt my feelings. Yeah. It's awkward. Yeah, it, it does seem strange. Yeah. But I will say, I give him a lot of credit, and we talked about this over the call, that he did apologize immediately. You know, this wasn't something that he let simmer or go past some time mm -hmm. to create more hurt. He immediately saw it and immediately addressed it. The interesting thing is that sometimes we can over apologize. Yes. Yeah. And I think that's what kind of starts to happen here mm -hmm. is that now it's not a balance where they were at and it was chemistry and fun. Now it's just this elephant in the room that's completely going to take over this relationship. Mm -hmm. And it seems like at this point, his level of guilt is higher than what he did yeah you know his, yeah his like he didn't run over her dog and right. kill the dog he just right. made a joke mm -hmm. that was maybe a little offensive to some people mm -hmm. some people would be bothered by it some people wouldn't just depends 
Over the course of the next week, she was clearly off. The level of affection in text isn't the same, and shortly after, she tells me she's still mad. We had a two-hour long conversation over the phone that night where she said she was still hurt and felt like she was comforting me more than I was sorry for hurting her. Such an awkward Mm -hmm. thing to be happening after just one maybe offensive joke here yeah and at first it seemed like it was more about the offensive joke and how that affected her but as things are progressing it seems to be more about how the conflict itself is being handled Mm -hmm. you know this seems like one of those situations where a couple is not fighting about the dishes anymore they're fighting about the fighting you never listen to me or you always bring stuff up from the past it's more about how the communication is happening rather than the content Yeah, it's it's very unusual how this played out. Mm -hmm. I continued to apologize and tell her it won't happen again. I mean, it could happen again. It's you know sometimes it's like he he made a joke that maybe was in poor taste. It's not like he couldn't make a joke in poor taste again if you're going to be in a relationship. Mm You know what I mean? Yeah, and you don't know exactly what's going to trigger your partner, what they will find offensive or whatnot. You know, this is something that is learned through time. Mm -hmm. I believe that we talked about this too during the call, that because it was a short relationship, maybe you pick up on somebody's humor somewhat, but you won't know the full range until you get to know them more and have more experiences together. Yeah. You know, this is reminding me of an incident that I had with one of my closest friends, and I had known her for years, but there was a time where I had made a a comment or a joke about her brother, and she spoke to me very firmly to say, hey, I really don't appreciate it when you talk about my family members. This is somebody that I've known for years. So I was like, whoa, a little bit taken aback, but reflecting back on that moment, I learned more about how she wants to be treated, things that are sensitive topics for her, Mm -hmm. and it helps me to treat her better, Mm -hmm. you know, and and we progressed in our relationship and, you know, things have been fine, Mm -hmm. but I say all of that to say that... Then her brother tried to murder you. (laughs) That's another story. (laughs) No, but what I'm saying is that you learn about a person's humor through time and, and about a person in general, what are sensitive spots, what are okay to say, things that are okay to say and what are not. Even people who are married for many, many years go through stuff like this. Yeah. I, I mean, but for one comment to make it spiral like this, it's just very unusual to hear something like this. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, he said, I continue to apologize and tell her it won't happen again. I didn't mean for it to come across that way, and she means a lot to me. Over, the we- over that weekend, my dog got very sick. She came over on that following Monday, and we went to get dinner and bring it home. In the parking lot, I broke down and started crying, saying how stressed I was about my dog and how I was, again, so sorry for hurting her. See, now I feel like it's just too much. Mm. It's like, all right, this is gonna come back up again. He's probably just upset because the dog isn't doing well and now he's just in a vulnerable place. But now I think the dynamic, I think it's just too much. It's just, there's not enough in the bank here Mm -hmm. to keep making withdrawals yeah yeah it's it is seeming like his guilt is disproportionate to what happened i told her i didn't want to make it about me i just wanted her to know where i was coming from she said it's okay we went home and we had our regular routine of doing things together eating brushing teeth getting in bed watching a show and cuddling they brush their teeth together yeah do they brush each other's teeth that would be interesting to see (laughs) (laughs) the next day she was off again and said she was upset and that she had to comfort me twice now and that we would talk tomorrow and this is tough you know because in the moment i can see her being a caring partner and saying okay my my partner is in need and i'm going to be there for them and then afterwards Depending on attachment style, depending on how somebody processes things, you might reflect back and think, wow, that was overwhelming. This is really sitting heavy with me even after some time has passed. So, you know, it's important to check in and and see how your partner is doing to remember too that the way that you apologize is, is important. I think because they were still so new, that fun and the chemistry was like completely gone at this point. 
And it was all centered around this one incident. Mm -hmm. And their whole relationship was now focused on this one incident and this one comment, really. Mm -hmm. The next day we had an hour long conversation where I again apologized prof profusely for everything, but she didn't believe me. Now, how many times does he apologize mm -hmm. at this point? 683 times. Yeah. How many times do you have to apologize? I mean, it sounded like he was being really authentic and sincere to me when I read mm -hmm. it. And you said you got that same feeling mm -hmm. too, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So, I mean, uh, again, another apology. And just a little tip here, you know, at this point, I can imagine if he were to reframe it by saying, you know what, thank you for accepting my apology and being able to, you know, continue this relationship, that things would have looked a lot differently. A lot of times you will meet people who say sorry for everything. I don't know if you've ever met somebody like that. Yeah. You know, or like Smithers from oh, I'm The sorry. Simpsons. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly like that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, something that can help in this is instead of saying sorry all the time is to say thank you. You mm. know, that sh does show a lot more gratitude. Thank you for being patient with me when I'm late. Mm -hmm. Or thank you for understanding that I'm sick. Or thank you for listening to me and having this conversation. So I'm thinking that those little reframes, those little different ways of, of saying this could have created a different type of environment, different type of vibe. Mm -hmm. Okay, a little bit more here. Uh, she said, I don't usually give second chances. And now... I feel dumb for giving you one. How many chances do you think people deserve? I didn't like this one bit. <laughs> I read that and I thought, how is this even connected to what has happened? I agree. He made a joke. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. if you want to say it was a tasteless joke, I won't disagree. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was a little tasteless. Uh, me and my friends, I could easily joke around with them. I could easily say that to you. Mm -hmm. You could easily say it to oh, yeah. me and we'd be laughing, right? And we talked about this too, about what humor is appropriate in a romantic relationship versus yeah. humor that's more better suited for your friends. <clears throat> yeah, so, uh, but for her to say, I don't usually give second chances, but he just made a, a tasteless joke. Mm -hmm. And now she's saying, I feel dumb for giving you, but why does she even feel dumb? It's not like he's done anything wrong after it. It's mm -hmm. not like he's repeated the offense. Right. He's shown nothing but remorse and apologize. And she's like, but I don't believe you. And at this point, does he even know that it is a second chance? What was the first chance? You know, it almost seems like <laughs> yeah. she's saying, I am being so forgiving of you and understanding and I'm bestowing upon you another chance and and you failed you yeah know, well that's what I'm saying is like there was no other offense mm -hmm. that she's like I feel you cheated on me once I gave you another chance and now I feel dumb because you cheated on me again right. he made a dumb joke once and now she's saying I feel dumb for giving you another chance but he didn't do it a second time and this comment to me told me that there's probably things during the relationship that maybe she didn't vocalize, maybe she didn't share. Uh, to me, there's something about this that um, that tells me that there's some level of resentment there. Yes, there is some level of resentment. I agree. Uh, but it's confusing why, because it doesn't seem like he's done anything wrong further other than to try to maybe apologize too much. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit more. And she wanted to take time to think things over. You know that's going to go bad. Mm. That following Sunday, she sent me a short text message saying she thought about it, talked to those close to her, and wanted to split up and not discuss it further. Mm. I mean, that is just weird. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's just weird. That's a weird thing to say and do, in my opinion. I don't, we're ending this, and I don't want to discuss it further, and I'm going to talk to all my friends and family about it. Another thing that's not mentioned in this email that he did mention over the call is in the car ride when he made that original comment mm -hmm. on the way back from whichever event they were going to, she had said something it's like lunch like, with a friend or something, right? Yeah, it was lunch with the friend was the event, but she had wanted to see the mom afterwards and have him meet her mother for the first time. So I suspected that there could have been some type of family involvement. I'm not sure if I remember correctly, but I believe that she also lived with the family. There was something there that made me think, I wonder if there's others involved with this. I feel that too. And the other thing too is, is like I mentioned, sure, certain things might offend anybody, 
but if you see somebody that's particularly sensitive to something, it might indicate that there has been some sort of tra past trauma. Yeah. So I'm not saying that she has been through this or not, but those who have been through verbal abuse might be very sensitive to comments like that in the future. Mm -hmm. so. But it sounded like they were really joking a lot with each other prior to that moment. Mm. That was the feeling that I got. Like they were really... Uh, making jokes and cracking jokes and it was all fun until she got hurt over that particular comment well anything can be a trigger yeah you know there's a little bit more here i asked if all the good things we had was worth less than this and she didn't respond she left her pillow stuffed animals sweatshirt t-shirt socks he's got the whole list here <laughs> earrings blanket shower products <laughs> hairbrush toothbrush and snacks he literally had to write snacks <laughs> surprised he didn't tell us which kind <laughs> and made no mention <laughs> but it was the rolled gold <laughs> she had rolled gold pretzel rods those are <laughs> those are worth a fortune for me i'll i'll drive to your house to get them <laughs> okay so the thing with the pretzels is they got discontinued and this man has been searching for them forever <laughs> they don't make them anymore Rolled gold pretzel rods. I've been eating them since I was a kid. Those were the snacks that she left. I'll go get them. Now I know why these things are so valuable. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and she made no mention of when she'd come and get them. She brought this over and she loves her pillow and stuffed animals. Why did she leave the stuff behind? Will I ever get her back? I guess what he was saying is that, and we talked about this over the call too, that it wasn't so much that the things were valuable individually, but it was the amount of stuff and some things that were very sentimental to her. Mm. Could you imagine if I left a bag of rolled gold pretzels at somebody's house? <laughs> it would have been the Applebee's I'd girl fly, too. I'd fly across the country to get those things back. I'm just here for my pretzels. <laughs> Don't get any ideas. <laughs> this isn't a grand gesture. I just want my pretzels back. Uh, oh, yeah. but it, okay. So, I mean, not a lot of that stuff is valuable. Mm -hmm. If you, I'm not going to go through that list again, but not a lot of that is very valuable. Yeah. Um, why I, did she leave it? What do you think? I, I think this end of the relationship was something that was a bit reactive. It was like so uncomfortable or yeah. something for her. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it seemed like it, it was at a point of exhaustion. This doesn't seem like this was something super premeditated that she's been thinking about for a while now, this seems like, okay, this conversation, uh, this guilt is, you know, getting overwhelming for me. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to call it off. I don't think she was thinking too much about the consequences, That's including true. the stuff. Yeah, I and think you're right. A lot of people too will ask, you know, should I, should I reach out to my ex to give them back their stuff? That stuff is collateral. You know, at some point, anytime in the future, they might reach back out to you to say, hey, I you know, I would like these things. Mm -hmm. And that would be a moment of interaction where maybe in the future you're a little bit more emotionally centered mm -hmm. that if they did want a conversation, you would be ready for it. So I don't think that, you know, an ex leaving stuff at your house is necessarily a bad thing. Yeah, no, she could reach out for those things. Mm -hmm. Some of it she might want back, obviously, more than others. Mm -hmm. uh, but will you ever get her back? Well, you didn't date for very long and it sounded like this fell apart very quickly. Um, the tough thing about this is that, you know, you have a biting sense of humor and she feels like an apple or something and you're biting into her. <laughs> she didn't like it. And so I think it would be tough for you to be with her long term because you want to be playful and funny and fun. And now you're going to constantly kind of worry that you're walking on eggshells with her. Mm hmm I, so I think it would be tough to turn around. Yeah, there's a lot of different factors that you want to consider as far as playing this into the future. You know, what what other things might come up? Also, how you will react to things in the future if there is something else that does upset her. Will you be overwhelmed with guilt that it distracts you from what the actual issue is? No. And likewise for her, would she be able to bring up things that make her uncomfortable? Will she be able to discuss why? Will she be clear with communicating with you any type of um, negative feelings that she might have before it comes to a place of, I regret giving you a second chance? Yeah, and you know, she is very young and so she may not be very individuated from her family, which may have been why she got them so involved with such a 
minor incident, mm -hmm. if you want to call it that. Yeah. Um, but you never know if she's going to reach out. It's possible. But I think you may not be a good fit with each other just based on her having a different sense of humor and you thinking she was a lot more able to laugh and have, you know, make jokes with you. Mm -hmm. That, you know, you're constantly going to worry, like, can I joke about this? Right. And this is also somebody whose past relationships have been challenging. You know, she, you mentioned she had been cheated on in the past. So in the future, there are other triggers that might come up for her, other things that make her uncomfortable, comments, things that happen. So it's important to think about what really this relationship would look like a year in, five years in, so on and so forth. And consider, you know, is this something that's worth it? Yeah, I think it's too early to tell. Mm -hmm. And they didn't have a very long relationship. So just leave her alone. I wouldn't contact her about any of this stuff. I think it'll just make her uncomfortable. If she reaches out and does an indirect for this stuff, an indirect direct, she may be looking for more than just the snacks and the earrings or the blanket. You know what I mean? Maybe she does miss you. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna have to watch and see what she does when she does reach out. But don't be too eager. And I would stay away from that apology again. Yeah, and don't beat yourself up. You know, I think we talked about this also in the call that, you know, these these issues, this feeling of guilt that can be overwhelming is something that you can very much work on, that you can improve on and get to a place where, you know, you can own up to your mistakes and take accountability, but also be compassionate to yourself. None of us is going to be perfect in relationships. We're going to mess up. We're going to say things that slip out that hurt our partners. And you were immediately, immediately apologetic. Yeah. You know, this is not a situation where you said something mean years ago that you denied ever happened or aren't willing to listen about how it hurt your partner. This is something that you were very receptive to, willing to own up on. And yeah. I think there's a lot of positivity to that. And I think that if you dated her longer, there's going to be a lot more issues coming up. You just don't know what they are yet. But I think this is kind of the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. Yep. All right. So interesting situation. Uh, obviously, if you want to get our help personally, you could do that on my website, AskCraig.net. I do email coaching and I do Skype. Victoria is also available for Skype coaching. I'm here whenever you're ready to talk. Just click on her name on the top of the website to schedule with her. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And we will talk with you soon.